Okay, uh, so good afternoon everyone and welcome to the first European ATS clinic here in Ghent. Uh, Bert al already introduced me, so I'm Oda. I'm a PhD student of Bert and a dermatology resident. Today I'm going to speak to you about the clinical features uh, of ATS. I'm going to give a little overview of uh, the arterial tortuosity syndrome. A first question for all is what exactly is the arterial tortuosity syndrome? Most of you already know it's a very rare genetic disorder. Why do we say very rare? Because it only affects 1 in 10 million people. It is characterized by the lengthening or the elongation and the twisting or the distortion, which we call tortuosity, of the large and middle-sized arteries, which you can see on the picture. This, this then results in the formations of kinks and loops, just as you can see here at the arteries, but you can also compare it with a river which makes turns in its course. As I already said, arterial tortuosity syndrome mainly affects the large and middle-sized arteries throughout the body. Arteries are the blood vessels that carry away the oxygen-rich blood away from the heart to all of the different organs, so they are very important. The arteries, besides the tortuosity formation, they also can undergo other complications. They can become larger, they can have <coughs> dilatations, which we then call aneurysms but they also can become smaller, they can narrow, and then we call it stenosis, which you can see here on the pictures. What exactly causes the arterial tortuosity syndrome? Well, we know that it's a hereditary condition, that you inherited it from your parents. We say about ATS, it is an autosomal recessive inheritance of the non-working SLC2A10 gene. Now, how does it really work? Now every people, every person here has two copies of every genetic factor, every, genetic, every gene in his body. For the autosomal recessive inheritance pattern, we know that parents have one working copy of the gene and one non-working copy of the gene. We call those uh, people carriers. When they have children, they have 25% to have a child with the condition because then the child has two non-working copies. They have 50% to have children that are also carriers, then they have one working copy and one non-working copy, and they have 25% chance that the child doesn't have um, the condition and isn't a carrier, so he has two uh, healthy copies of the same gene. Now, the SLC2A10 gene. Again, what is a gene and what, uh, what do genes do? Genes are very important for the body because they carry information that determines your traits. How you look, how tall you are, what the color of your eyes, everything is written down in your genes. They are passed on to you from your parents. Especially for the SLC2A10 gene, of which we know it causes arterial tortuosity syndrome, we want to know what it does. However, we do not know really yet. We know it has a role in connective tissue, and especially in elastic fibers, but the specific role and function are not known yet. That's why it is very important to perform further research on patients. So what are elastic fibers? Elastic fibers can be found throughout the body in a lot of different uh, tissues, such as the skin and the lungs, also in the arteries. They provide these <coughs> tissues with the property of elastic recall and resilience. In fact, they allow the tissues to, this to stretch just like a rubber band. How do we know that ATS is associated with elastic fiber formation? Well, we already did some studies in normal skin and in patients uh, with ATS in their skin. When we look at the elastic fibers in the uh, normal skin, you can see them here. Oh, not so good. You can see them here with uh, the purple bands. However, when we look in the skin of arterial tortuosity patients, you don't see them anymore. You see that they are less, uh, less more present and that they're really fragmented. So here they're a lot more thicker uh, than in the other two samples. I hope you can see it a little bit. Um, we also know it because we performed electron microscopy in the skin of uh, arterial tortuosity patients. Arterial um, <coughs> electron microscopy uh, allows you to look at the cells at a very large magnification. It has a, a far greater um, res 
um, resolution than the normal stainings. And here, in fact, we see a single elastic fiber. You can see it consists of the black core and it is surrounded by uh, microfibrils, which are small um, uh, molecules around the elastic fiber. However, when we look at the patients with arterial tortuosity syndrome, you can see that the core isn't really in continuity with the microfibrils. It's much more loose and you also see that the black, dot, that the black is formed much more in globules. So it isn't connected anymore. So that's why we think it has an, to do with the elastic fiber, uh, fibers in the body. Now, very important for you is to know what can be the different symptoms of arterial tortuosity patients. Very recently, we uh, made a study in a large cohort of patients. Uh, we studied 50 patients, so for such a rare disorder, that was uh, really a lot. And we know that uh, ATS affects many different organ systems. We know that it can mainly affect the blood vessels and the heart, the skin, but also the eyes, the skeleton and the joints and the lungs. When we look at these patients, we see that they have typical facial features. They can have a long face, a beaked nose, they also can have rather large ears and uh, they have a highly arched palate. However, as you can see in the pictures of these patients, that can, it can be quite variable. Some people have more uh, typical char characteristics than the other ones. However, it's very important to look at these um, different characteristics because it helps us clinicians to recognize the ATS uh, patients and to ease the establishment <coughs> of the diagnosis. A second very important uh, um, thing of the, um, of the symptoms is the, are the connective tissue manifestations. On one hand, you have the skin manifestations. Many patients have a soft, hyperextensible skin, of the, or they can have um, a loose, uh, non-elastic skin like cutis laxa. But we know that they also have normal scarring and no wound healing problems. So that's also really important for if they undergo surgery uh, or if they um, hurt themselves. A second manifestation are the herniations. They can have diaphragmatic hernias and inguinal hernias, such as, like you can see on the picture um, above. In this case, in a herniation, uh, a tissue or an organ will abnormally exit through uh, the wall of the cavity in which it is located. So like a, a small piece of bowel will come out. Um, they also have joint laxity, as you can see on the picture below. We also identified several musculoskeletal problems. Patients can have pectus deformities. You can see this on the picture um, there. Um, they can have the, uh, the um, thoracic cavity, which goes uh, to the inside. Um, they also can have long fingers, as you can see on the um, x-ray above, which we call arachnodactyly. Patient also can have problems with the spine. The spine cannot be, uh, it can be the case that it's not entirely straight. And then we call it scoliosis. And also we found that many patients have joint pain and muscle pain. Of course, very important are the uh, cardiovascular problems. It's arterial tortuosity syndrome, so we know that the tortuosity is present in all patients. It mainly affects the aorta, the main um, the main uh, artery of the body, um, but it also can affect every other um, middle uh, or large sized artery in the body, such as the lung arteries or the neck arteries. And we also saw in rare cases that even the brain arteries can be affected. Like I already said, it can be associated with uh, stenosis. We found that almost half of the patients had a stenosis, so a narrowing of their lung arteries. We also found that the large um, blood vessel, the aorta, had, an, um, had a stenosis that we call aortic coarctation. And in some patients, we also identified a renal artery stenosis. This is important because it can be associated with uh, hypertension. <coughs> Another important cardiovascular problem for our patients is that they can form thoracic aneurysms. Um, so dilatations mainly of the, large, of the aorta of the large um, artery. 
these aneurysms can be very large and they can also um, occur at young age. We saw them in small babies from a couple of months to almost uh, children of four years. However, we think they have a very good prognosis because none of the uh, children had any dissections of rupt or ruptures which you could expect with these large diameters. So we think um, they have a good amenability to surgery and therefore a very good prognosis. Some other cardiovascular risks include stroke and also ischemia of the bowel due to the stenosis of the bowel um, arteries. We also in our case series identified lung problems. Those lung problems were mostly um, present at birth and we called it neonatal respiratory distress because right immediately after birth these patients had difficulty breathing. So it's a very uh, severe symptom, but we also saw that they recovered very well when they just got standard neonatal care. <coughs> so also they had a very good prognosis. A very recent discovery was the uh, eye problems in the ATS patients. We already know they had some problems that they could be nearsighted, but uh, recently in uh, collaboration with the Arkansas Children's Hospital, uh, physicians found that in patients who were examined with automated keratometry, which you can see in the picture there, it's just a regular eye exam, that they have corneal thinning. The cornea is the outer layer of your eyes and um, it became thinner. When it becomes thinner, it can result in keratasia, keratoconus, or keratoglobulus. These are difficult names for uh, changes in the shape of the cornea, as you can see down there, like a cone-shaped uh, cornea in the case of keratoconus. It's important because it can cause symptoms like bird vision and light sensitivity. However, for this, we have some good news because they discovered there was maybe a possible treatment in which they did cross-linking for the collagen uh, in the cornea. And this can heal these patients. However, we need to do some more investigations in ATS patients uh, to be sure uh, if we can use it. So it has to be continued. So now you know what are the main features of our, our ATS. And on this is also um, the clinic is based on these uh, different um, symptoms. In our clinic, like Berto already said, we have a multidisciplinary approach and that's why you or your children will be undergoing a series of different uh, examinations. Um, you will be undergoing uh, by me or by Bert a uh, full clinical examination just to look at all the, um, um, just look at the whole body. Um, for the blood vessels and the heart, you will get an echocardiography. We will, in the case of echocardiography, we will look with ultrasound to the structure of the heart and the large blood vessels. You also get an electrocardiogram. In this, uh, we use to look at the um, electrical activity of the heart. Um, some of you, like uh, Tyrese. Uh, we'll, go under, uh, we'll undergo an MRI, to, uh, which allows us to map all of the blood vessels in the whole body. Um, furthermore, for the, uh, for the case I just described, you will be undergoing an ophthalmological examination. So we will know if really almost all, every patient have the corneal thinning or not. We also hope to do a pulmonary function test. So that's maybe something to do in uh, the future because we m suspect there may be some uh, pulmonary symptoms. <coughs> and um, you will also be undergoing an ultrasound of the urinary tract and the pleur of the renal ves vessels to see is there if there are stenosis of the um, renal arteries, as we found in some patients. And finally, I also uh, be taking skin biopsies in some patients. This is important because it allows us, just like you uh, saw on, on the picture, to look with electron microscopy, also to perform um, other functional studies, uh, which allows us to look at the, um, the role of the SLC2A10 gene. So such, uh, that's why I will be taking them. So thank you very much for your uh, attention. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me. Thank you.